In this week's episode, Darren Lee meets up with Jasmine Jaffa in England. I'll be meeting up with one of the hardest working young adults I know. And join me as I witness Malaysia's much-awaited racing event, the Malaysia Merdeka Endurance Race. Welcome race fans to the 2013 Malaysia Merdeka Endurance Race where drivers as far as Slovakia battle it out right here at the Sepang International Circuit. What's up for grabs? Bragging rides. I'm Darren Lee and you're watching Motorsports at Petrona. You gotta run, run, run. Jasmine Jafar, a Malaysian talent who made his mark in the British F3, is now eyeing the coveted title at the World Series by Renault. Now, I'll be spending some time with my boy Jasmine just to see how life is like for a young working adult in the motorsports industry. I'll be heading to Brackley, England, the home base of Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. So, you guys better stick around. I'm here at the Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One factory. Now you're all geared up. What have you got planned for us today? Well, today we've got so many, so many things filled up. I'm doing a seat fit uh, in the Formula One car, right. and I'm going to show you what this special day really means to me. What's your everyday routine like? You know, on race weekends and non-race weekends. Well, um, it consists of a lot of training. Um, I'm really focused and and prep into my preparation, and that consu consumes a lot of time. Um, we don't do anything strenuous or anything, but um, just to keep your mind focused into racing and doing your job. Right. You're a pretty young guy. You know, how long have you been in this career for? Oh, uh, I started when I was six and now I'm 20. Uh, I've been with Petronas for five years and I've been feeling really privileged to be part of it. So um, I'm happy that this day is, is, is coming and driving the Formula One car is going to be something really special. Now, speaking about your career, most 9 to 5 guys won't treat this like a 9 to 5 job. You know, you're at seat fitting, you're at the simulator. Tell us what your work life's all about. Well, it's not as easy as it sounds. It sounds exciting, I mean, seat fitting, simulator and all that. But uh, it's a tough job, I must say. There's a lot of early wake-up calls, uh, lots of travelling, uh, lots of hard work. But um, if you do something that you enjoy and if you're passionate about, then you look forward to, to every day. So that's, that's my motivation to every day. Okay, cool. So, tell us what's next. Let me show you. All right. So, Jasmine, tell me what's going on here. Um, basically, he's taken out a lot of the air out. Um, uh, as from, from the bubbles which moulds your seat. Um, he's putting in and filling up all the spaces on the sides. And from there, we'll see how high or whether I need more foam or less foam. Um, and uh, it's going to take more air out. Now, while we wait for your seat to get ready, let's go through a couple of questions. Um, how do you find that balance, you know, being a young working adult and your personal life? It's tough. It's really, really tough because um, you're away a lot and sometimes uh, there are times where when you're free and having your downtime, but your friends are having exams, you know, so it's not easy. Um, but I keep in touch a lot with my friends. Uh, we keep in touch by Skype. Um, we trade a lot with music and stuff because I, I love my music. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's so many ways with, with uh, keeping in touch with your friends with the modern technology nowadays. For example, the simulator. To me, to a guy like me, that's like playing video games, you know. But how does, how does that translate to work for you? 
Um, it's a very sophisticated, yeah, sophisticated piece of kit. I mean, um, you spend a lot of money with having the uh, motions and, and all the models right. Um, it's not easy, obviously, to get everything perfect, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very useful tool. Um, it's good for a young driver like me to get um, uh, to understand more about the car and how the team works and how how the steering wheel works for that matter. You know, there's so many buttons on the wheel, but um, yeah, it's a good prep, very good prep. All right. Well, you're constantly in a very competitive environment. How do you cope with the pressure? Good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I try not to think about it. Um, I try um, to get my mind away from things and just focusing on, on doing the best I can and focusing on doing the job I can. And uh, yeah, I mean, the results come after, after all the hard work you've put in. Awesome. So what's next after this? Well, we're going to see what the, um, the remainders of the seats will be like and then see whether I need more or less, um, see the pedals and see whether the steering wheel fits well and from there um, the seat will be almost ready. Can't wait, let's go. Let's go. Man, I didn't know the seat fitting would take so long. Yeah, it does. I mean, it takes time to find the right amount of, you know, um, uh, fit, you know, you need to, um, to be comfortable. To, to find that perfect seat, to have it comfortable, it takes it takes quite a bit of time and, and I'm I'm quite fussy with my seat, I must say. Yeah, yeah, alright, but it's good to be fussy, you know. Yeah, true. So where we are right now? Um, I'm at the simulator because I need to prep uh, some laps and do, do some debriefs after yeah. this, so unfortunately I can't let you in. Man, <laughs> alright, just have fun and we'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Alright man, good see luck. See you man. The Silverstone Circuit needs no introduction. Home to the British Grand Prix, it is built on a World War II Royal Air Force bomber station in the 1940s. Now, it's seen the likes of the great and greatest make flying laps on this very tarmac. I can hear the oohs and ahs, but it's just another day in the office for Jasmine Jafar. So we're here at Silverstone. You had an awesome run this morning. How did you feel? It felt amazing. I mean. There's so many procedures and buttons that you get to go to find your way around and learn, but I've learned so much already and it's been an awesome run, so I really enjoy it. Well, speaking of your career, um, when did you know that this is it? This is my career choice? Um, good question, actually. As, as I said before, I started at six years old as a hobby, and then at eight when I did the club races, Malaysian championships, I started winning them and I told Mom and Dad that I wanted to be a Formula 1 driver. Obviously, Mom was really shocked. It was hard to go through her because she's quite protective of me. But uh, yeah, I mean, we made it to where we are today. Well, you got to follow your dream, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, your career throws you right into the limelight. How does that, how does that make you feel when it comes to pressure? Does it increase the pressure just to succeed? Well, it's, I guess it's good to have a bit of pressure to perform, but I, my desire is always to win and, and do well, so I put myself in that pressure to perform. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's normal for any athlete or any, any um, you know, anyone who's competing to, to do well. Well, okay, thank you very much for letting Pleasure. us shadow you. But before we let you go, bam, we've got some rapid fire Q&A no for way. you, all right? So, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire at you right. 10 mm -hmm. questions, all right? You have to answer me as fast as you can in quick succession, okay. all right? All right? Ready? First question, in no particular order, name all three of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Right, it's 2000, Return of the King, uh, Fire Ship of the Ring. Bing! Right. He's got the first one right. Next, name the colours in the flag of Brazil. Yellow, green, blue, white. Bing, second question down. Phil Collins is a solo artist and also a member of a band. Name that band. Uh, Miss. Next. Who originally sang Uptown Girl? Clue, not Westlife. Uh, is it Westlife? <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta give it a miss. All right, next. How many red and white stripes are there in the Malaysian flag? 14. All right. Name Han Solo's spaceship in Star Wars. Here's it's, a clue. It's Falcon, isn't it? Something Falcon. Something Falcon. Uh, After a thousand years, what would you, what would that be? 
TikTok. Next, who won Best Actress at the recent Academy Awards or also known as the Oscars? Jennifer Lawrence. Ding! Now, the teddy bear is named after which U.S. president? Ooh. Tuffy. Meh. Next, which city hosted the 1984 Summer Olympics? Right. Atlanta? Uh, wrong. There's Los Angeles. Never mind, last question to redeem yourself. Name the smallest ocean in the world. Uh, Atlantic Ocean? Is that your final, final, final answer? I think so. It also starts with an A. Ooh, that's a, that's a toughie. <laughs> It's the Arctic Ocean. No way. No problem. You tried your best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Next, next up, we'll, we'll bring you up for the more Q&A. Sure, All right? sure. There are some of us who know what we want at an early age and are mentally focused to stay on course. Well, those are the lucky ones. But truth of the matter is, Lady Luck can only take you so far. You have to be hungry and determined to fulfill your dreams. At just the legal age of 21, Jasmine Jafar is well on the way of achieving his dreams. Here's to hoping we have a Formula One driver we can call our own. A premium racing event in Malaysia's motorsports calendar, the grueling 12-hour race promises round-the-clock action and a test of true grit for both men and machine. Defending champion, the Petronas Sintium team will once again put their hopes and dreams in cars number 1 and 28 in bringing the trophy home. Although the MME race coincides with a round in the Super Taikyu racing calendar, the home race is always a top priority. The team has fielded the driving expertise of touring car legend and five-time DTM champion Bernd Schneider to drive together with Sintium's own Jono Lester and Dominic Ang in car number one. German drivers Thomas Jäger, Luca Ludwig and Lucas Wolf will drive car number 28. The Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 is the Petronas Sintim team's trusted steed for this weekend's race and who better to drive it to victory than Schneider and Jaeger, two individuals who developed the mean machine. A little chit chat with these two individuals is in order, don't you think? Well, this is your second time racing in the MME and safe to say you're accustomed to the Sepang circuit and the Malaysian weather. And it has always been that the MME is raced from day to night. But this year, it's going to be night to day. So in terms of the performance of the cars and the drivers, which would you prefer and why? Uh, I don't care. I mean, uh, it's a bit easier maybe for the drivers this uh, system from midnight to midday because at night it's not that hot. Uh, I remember two years ago from 12 to 4 o'clock was pretty hot. And, yeah. Uh, uh, we suffered a little bit, but the car is quite good. Uh, even in our car's air conditioning, I mean, <laughs> we, wouldn't, we wouldn't mind so much if we start at 12 o'clock. But anyway, overall, it's for everyone a bit easier starting at night. Okay. And you developed the SLS AMG GT3 from the ground up with Mercedes-Benz AMG. What makes this car suited for endurance racing, particularly the Medica Millennium Endurance Race? I mean... Uh, the main thing is the car is very easy to drive. It's not only done for a professional racing driver, it's also made for, for the amateurs and gentlemen drivers. And uh, another thing is uh, that the car is uh, very good designed for the drivers sitting relaxed in the car, get a good air flow to the car, uh, to have a good cooling, especially if, if it's hot like this. Yeah. And um, also we, we really concentrated that the car right for 24-hour races and uh, we are pretty sure that uh, that the car uh, has no technical failure during, during the 24-hour race. I have done now uh, this year uh, three 24-hour races. I all won them and uh, the car we had no problem and now I have to know what that it stays <laughs> in that way. Um, but the car is very rideable and uh, we are very proud uh, to, to have such a good car. 
Cups you've raced in the German F3, DTM, World Touring Car Championship and you're attached to the AMG Customer Sports as a coordinator since 2010. How has all this experience prepared you for your race right here in the MME? Yeah, first of all, all the experience got into the car because I was involved in the development and we put all the knowledge into the SLS AMG GT3 um, and that's why uh, I think we are good uh, prepared for this race here. We have a good cooling in the car, um, so a lot of airflow which makes it easier with these temperatures uh, to do also longer stints and um, yeah, the car was quite reliable in the past. So we are really looking forward to the race. Speaking of temperature, Zipang Circuit is notorious for its soaring temperatures both on track and in the cockpit and these factors could affect both drivers and cars. So what is your strategy to ensure that the car gets to the finish line? Well, first of all, as I said, the car is very reliable. Yep. We finished all the 12-hour, 24-hour races in the past. So I think uh, or I hope there will be no issue with the technical side um, and for the driver side, I mean, we are well prepared. Yeah. We have a drink system, we have a good airflow in the car, so um, we are quite fit. So it should be okay, but it will be hard work. It will be very demanding for the drivers. You need to concentrate a lot That's right. and um, the temperature will stress the drivers as well. Jano, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah, you look very fresh. I do. Nice, nice gym session this morning, ready for the day's practice. So feeling good. Okay, I feel like a slug right now, thank you very much. Well, first time racing in the MME, Jono, partnering with Ben Schneider, no less. A huge deal for many to drive with a touring car legend. Has it all sinking yet? I think it's beginning to now. Now that I've worked with Ben for a couple of days at the circuit and done some practice, it's certainly sunk in. But uh, right up until the weekend, I've just been so excited, like a kid on Christmas. And uh, to drive with a guy with such a pedigree is amazing. So. But you know, he's really down to earth and um, he's great to work with. He's been really helpful already to Dominic and I and we've already learned a lot, I think. So, uh, you know, as we head into the, the business end of the weekend now, I think we've got a really good package. Yeah, very nice. And also, um, you've been picked to represent the Petronas Sintim team, the MME defending champions, while the rest of your teammates are in Japan for the Super Taikyu. Is there any added pressure? I actually think there's, uh, there's no more pressure at all and the reason being that this team is proven both here and in Japan as being winners. Um, so as long as we as drivers do our job properly, I have 100% faith in the car, obviously the great SLS AMG GT3, the team, um, everybody works well together um, and as two time defending champions, uh, I don't think there's any extra pressure because I know that if we do our jobs right, we can, uh, you know, we can continue and make it three. You've got a huge responsibility this weekend, right? I mean, the Sin Tim team picked you to represent them while they're racing in Japan and you have a title to defend that you won with Taniguchi and Yanagida. How are you feeling so far? So far I'm feeling great and really happy that I get to try and defend my title again mm -hmm. and together with my Super Taiku teammate, uh, Jono. And a great honour to team with Bern Schneider. So be uh, very, very pumped up for this weekend. Mm, you seem so calm <laughs> before the storm. <laughs> The Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 was awarded the Best Racing Performance Trophy at the AMG Customer Sports Season Finale for its winning performance in the Super TIQ and the MME. So in your opinion, what makes this car a perfect fit for endurance racing? Well, I think uh, Mercedes and AMG has done very well in developing the car the last two years. Mm -hmm. So I think overall the car is designed for this endurance racing, I guess. And uh, I think this year he has done the best so far, winning I think four endurance races, three twenty-four and one short hour races. So I think it's a very good endurance car. This is your first time racing in an endurance race, right? And uh, with your experience racing a Formula car in the Formula Three Euro Series, do you think it'd be easy for you to adapt to driving a touring car like the SLS GT3? No, for sure it's not easy. It's it's a different kind of, of driving. With Formula, you have to be really, really smooth with the driving style. And in this car, you you can go really a lot um, yeah, over the curbs, over the bumps. It doesn't really matter because the car is really heavy. And this is also, we have to look for the fast corners. And yeah, the car is also really powerful. So um, yeah, it's a different kind of driving. Not easier, but uh, yeah. 
It's different just kind. different challenges. Yes. Well, you're no stranger to endurance racing, having raced in the 24 Hours Nürburgring and the Blancpain Endurance Series. Are you looking forward to your debut in the Madeka Millennium Endurance Race? Yes, of course. I think uh, that there will be some key factors in that race. It is mostly a, a night race, so seven out of 12 hours will be at night. So you have to adapt to that. You have to to be aware of that and uh, in the 24 hours race at the Nürburgring it's always an, a night race and um, a second key point is the traffic. You have, you have to be aware that there are a lot of cars which are, which are slower than you and this is also a key factor which I got to know uh, in Germany because in the endurance races I do there, there's always a lot of traffic. At exactly 0 hundred hours, 36 cars will be racing under the moonlit sky for the next 12 hours in hopes of winning the coveted title of MME Champion. While waiting for that exciting moment, let's have a chat with the Chief Operating Officer of Sepang International Circuit, Mishamila Nadaraja, to find out more about the 2013 Malaysia Madeka Endurance Race. Hi Shamila, it's so nice to speak with you. Thanks so much for your time. Not at all. <laughs> Welcome to Sabang International Circuit, our 14th edition of the Malaysia Merdeka Endurance Race. Thank you. Perhaps you could tell us how MME started? Well, it's an interesting story actually. Um, when we first started Sabang International Circuit in 1999, after we did the Formula One, um, I, our founder back then, uh, the previous Prime Minister Tun Mahathir Mohamad, he decided that he wanted a race that was strictly Malaysian. So we started the endurance race as the Proton Endurance Race for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then we've had and then we changed the name to the Malaysian Merdeka Endurance Race to honor our Independence Day. And that's been running for the last 13 years. Both of Sintium's Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 started at P1 and P2 on the grid and looked confident in retaining the crown. But four hours into the race, disaster struck when car number 28 stalled on track. Soon after, car number 1 came into the pit garage to fix its nagging timing belt and it was back on track an hour later. Although 22 laps behind the lead, the Sintium team never lost hope. I quote Jono Lester, This is the game we play. And true to the fighting spirit of Petronas' Sintium team, car number one fought its way to 8th position. Unfortunately, after 218 laps, car number one had to retire. A disappointing day for the team, but this is endurance racing at its best. Anything could happen in endurance racing and today is no exception. Although we were not able to see the Petronas Sintium team on the podium, it was nonetheless an exhilarating race. I'm Julie Woon and thanks for watching Motorsports at Petronas. Don't forget to log on to www.petmos.com.my to find out more about your favourite teams, drivers and race results. I'll be meeting up with one of the hardest young adults I know. He's so hard, he's steel. He's made out of steel. <laughs> the Silverstone circuit needs no introduction. I've lost everything. The cold has taken everything. Now you're all geared up. What have you got planned for today? It's going to be a special day for me today. I'm doing a seat fit in the Formula One car. What? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> Oh, my God.